Back in the office, we're going to start working with Agisoft Metashape Professional. Uh, but before, I will show you some other software that you might want to try, if possible, because some of them are really expensive. So I'm going to start with this one, which is not that expensive, and actually you can deploy it in your machine for free if you just want to spend uh, a little bit more time doing it. Uh, if you want to support the project, you can download the installer, which is just $57. Um, other software that you can use is Micmac, which is uh, this one. It's similar, so all this software is uh, designed to process uh, photographs and uh, pair all these photographs and produce point clouds and textures and that, so on. Another uh, software that it's very famous is this one, which is Pix4D, although it's mostly used for drone photography. Um, and most of the photogrammetric models used, uh, generated with this software are, um, are produced on a server outside your machine, so you need to upload the photos and they will process the photographs for you. Another software that it's gone, but it's one of the pioneers, is uh, Microsoft Photosynth. And this software actually was very famous because actually appeared in one of the CSI TV shows. I think it was CSI New York. And it's the same, it's photogrammetry, and uh, you can have uh, um, uh, 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 you can see it uh, working more or less uh, if you just search on YouTube, uh, CSI, uh, Microsoft Photosynth, and you will find the video. And the software that we're going to use is Agisoft Metashape, which used to be called Agisoft Photoscan. Uh, so let's see. So the first thing you want to do is to go to tools and then preferences and just double check if you are using your GPU to process the dense point cloud. This is very important because if this, uh, if, if the graphics card that are in your machine are not uh, selected or checked here, um, you won't be able to use your GPU capabilities and it will take more time to process all the the point cloud. So this is important. Once you have done that, then you can go to this area. So this is the workspace panel. And just be sure that you select the chunk one. You can have more than one chunks, but for now that's uh, it's, it's just enough to know this. And then uh, what I like about Agisoft is that it's really straightforward to pr produce your first model. Um, you just have to use the workflow. And as you can see, uh, now everything is grayed out. And you just have to follow the order. So let's start with add our photos. But in this case, I'm going to use the second option because all my photos are in one folder. So I'm going to select Add Folder. And then um, I already put all my photographs in two different folders. So one for the church and one for the path. I'm going to select the church. I'm going to select this folder. And select the first option, which is Single Cameras. In this case, we have 249 uh, photographs. So each photograph is considered a camera. So press OK. Once we have uh, our images loaded, there are uh, preliminary steps that you can take. So let's select the first image, double click. So this image looks, looks okay. The problem with this image is that it has a lot of sky. So we can get rid of the sky for the processing uh, by masking it. So in order to mask uh, areas of the image that we don't want uh, to be processed, we just need to select using this tool. You can use the magic wand. 
So you just have to click and use it as you would do it in uh, Photoshop. So just click on the area that uh, shares similar colors of, uh, and then it will be selected automatically for you. And in order to mask it, you can just press this icon, which is the add selection to the mask. Or alternatively, you can just press Control Shift A. And then you will notice that it's masked because uh, now it's great. Okay, so I can do this for all the photographs, which is something that I'm going to do definitely because otherwise, because most of the images have sky, uh, you will have noise on top of the church. And we don't want that noise because it will look ugly on our final model. So we want to get rid of the sky. So I, I will mask all the photographs and then I will return to you once all the photographs are masked. There will be some occasions where you uh, will select more than the area that you uh, are supposed to mask. But then if I want to mask this area, as you can see the selection area it's well beyond the limits of the actual area that I would like to mask. What you can do is to uh, unmask these areas that you don't want to mask. So in order to do that, just change the, the tool for intelligent scissors and then just make a selection of the area that you don't want to mask. So in this case is, is all this area and close your uh, polygon by clicking in the first uh, vector and then instead of using this uh, icon the add selection uh, use the next one which is a subtract selection or alternatively you can use control shift s and then you will remove that mask. Let's go further. Um, the next step in the workflow is to align the photos. So now that the photos are masked, the program will take only the pixels that are not masked. So let's click on this and then uh, let's start with the generic preselection. This is um, one by one photographs, but uh, the program will take a sample of photos to compare with. So if you deselect the generic preselection, uh, it won't uh, sample photographs to pair, but it will take uh, all the photographs and it will look for similarities among all of the photos. So this will require more time. But generally speaking, the generic preselection is very accurate. So let's keep it like that. And uh, the accuracy, uh, if you start with high, it will um, use the, the original photo as it is. With the highest accuracy, it will uh, high scale the image by four. So it's as if you were uh, changing the size of the image. If you use the medium, the low or the lowest, it will downscale the image. So it will be, um, uh, it will work with less pixels. So, it's a very intensive uh, computer process, but I will recommend you to wait for the high uh, pre generic preselection or even the highest. Um, for this amount of cameras, which is 246, it will take no more than 15 minutes. So I will recommend you to use the high or the highest. So for this, I'm gonna choose highest. Uh, this value, just uh, keep it as it is, source. And this is the key point limit. So that means the amount of points uh, or pixels that are gonna be used uh, to generate the, uh, the course uh, point cloud. The other options that are faded out, such as reference preselection um, or reset current alignment is only, uh, are gonna be available only the first one if your photographs are uh, georeferenced already, so if, if they have uh, GPS information, 
and the reset uh, current alignment uh, it's going to be available only after you already aligned the photos you can see the details here uh, so how the the process is going and now as you can see the gpu is uh, in use so that's good because uh, now it's going to be uh, faster we just have to wait until the program finishes okay finally it's done uh, as you can see there's a message that says that some photos fail to align this is not a problem and it's completely normal so we're just gonna press ok and now we will see how many cameras are aligned so it's 218 out of 246 so i think it's pretty nice um, as you can see now we have a preliminary point cloud which looks very very nice and since we remove all the, the sky we don't have uh, too much noise on top of the of the church so oh, we have a we have a gap of the roof actually i missed to take photographs of that area so now the next step is um, to put the markers the process is as follows you need to look at the markers in your photos so in this case are the last photos so let's start with um, for instance this photograph which shows um, the first marker and uh, let's see if there's another one so oh, this one this one shows the first the second and the third so for the first one uh, we're gonna approach to the center of the marker and we're gonna right click and we're gonna add marker and it's as simple as that and since the photographs are already uh, aligned you will see that once you put this point if you select another photograph so let's try with this one already the program uh, identified where is uh, positioned the, the marker so if you just want to uh, put it more precisely you just have to drag it to the point that it should be and uh, all the the photographs with a um, blue flag actually the program already detected uh, where the marker is so to, to put the the rest of the markers you just have to do the same thing so this is the second one so right click add marker and now in the same photograph we can see the other marker but we cannot see the center so let's select another photo let's try this one okay we can see the center here add marker and we can see the last one here add marker so it's as simple as that um, and now what we can do is to uh, put the, the measurements of these markers so if we go to this panel and we go to reference we will see that the markers is, are here so by selecting two markers the ones that we want to, to set up the, the distance uh, so just press shift select the marker one and then the marker two and then right click and then uh, you have to select the option create scale bar and as you can see the scale bar was created here and then you just have to set up the distance so from point one to point two the distance is one meter 22 centimeters and we can set up the accuracy so in this case the accuracy is not in millimeters so we can just say that it's uh, one centimeter the accuracy and we can do the rest uh, of the points the same way so from point two to point three right click create a scale bar and then the distance in this case is two meters and 92 the accuracy is the same and then from point 
3 to 0.4 and then right click create a scale bar and then the distance is 2.81 and that's it so now that we have created the the distances um, the the model should be uh, corrected but now what I'm going to show you is a technique where you can use the coordinates from Google Earth to set up uh, the georeference of this uh, model. So I noticed that there are at least three features that you can use to set up uh, coordinates that are visible from a satellite image. So for instance, in this uh, image, we have a like post. So I'm just gonna try to put a point in the bottom of this uh, post. So right click, add marker, and I'm gonna check if there, the marker appears in another photograph, such as this one. So yeah, it's here, it's in the right position. And the other point is here, add marker. Okay, and then the other point is this one, add marker. Okay, so now we have three additional markers, but we don't know the distance. Uh, let's see if these markers appear in a different photos. Okay, we have this one, it's all right. Uh, this one is bad positioned, but we can just correct it like this. And then we can move this here. So let's see if, if these points appear in, a, in another photo. No. Uh, let's try this one. It's correct. Uh, but let's see if there's another one. Oh, okay, for instance, this one. Let's move it here. And then let's try with another photo just uh, to, to finish. Okay, this is correct. This is correct and this is correct. Let's here. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. So now that we are in Google Earth, we can um, take the coordinates of these points that are visible from our photogrammetry. So the first uh, light post is this one. Uh, so this is the, the these are the coordinates that we need. So I'm gonna just uh, locate the this um, mark here. So I'm gonna zoom in more. So more or less, I'm gonna put the point here, which is roughly the um, the center of this light post, and I'm gonna copy these coordinates. So easting, and I'm gonna add it to the um, point five, which is um, is this one. Oh, okay, I, I, I'm missing something. I need to set up the coordinate system that I want to use, which in this case is UTM. And um, so I'm gonna use the UTM zone 30. And in this case is the uh, marker reference. Uh, Northing. So I'm going to put it here, okay, and then uh, I'm going to move it to this post, so roughly there, so easting and northing, okay. 
And then finally, the one that is crossing the road, which is this one. And uh, yes, that's fine. Easting. And northing. Okay, so now I'm gonna check these three points with coordinates and I'm gonna refresh this, so update transform and you will see what happened. So I'm gonna close this window. Well, the model is gone, but if you want to put it back on view, just click on this icon. And then once you see the model, you will notice that the model is not properly aligned to the axis of the program. The reason of that is because we need to assign the C values or the set values. So we are going to extract them from Google Earth as well. So in this case, we know that the elevation is about, let's see, I'm going to activate the terrain. So I'm going to go again here. Properties. Okay. So roughly is 88 meters, but I'm going to check this point. So it's 87 more or less. And then the other point is... 87 so for the first two I'm going to put 87 and for this one I'm going to put 87.5 because I'm not sure it's one meter so remember that this is uh, this is not accurate but we uh, we can set up the, the coordinates so I'm going to refresh this and uh, yep, yeah, more or less, there you go. And if you want to double check that, you can go to this uh, uh, tab, which is called Orto. And now the points are in the correct position, as you can see here. This is um, a satellite image. Okay, now that we have set up these points, um, we can actually make a trick for uh, to, to see if the altitude is correct. We can use the roof of the church to see if our model is leveled. To do that, we need to see the model from either side of um, the predefined views. So we can use left, right, front or back. But the most important thing is that we have to put the roof uh, along the church parallel to the upper side of the model panel. So to do that, first change the view from perspective to orthographic. So this way we can avoid uh, distortions of the model so we can have an orthographic view. So now try to align the roof of the church to the upper side as, uh, of the panel and if they are parallel, that means that uh, your model is leveled. If they are not parallel, that means that the model is, uh, it has to be corrected using the, the altitudes that we got from Google Earth. I think this model is correct because you can see the slope in the street, which you can perceive it in reality, but uh, the roof is horizontal. And I think now we can proceed to create the dense point cloud now that we have set up the, the scales and the points and uh, yep I think that's it now let's see how it goes so the next step uh, if you return to workspace and follow uh, continue the fault the workflow the next step is build the dense cloud. And to save some time, I'm just gonna build a low quality uh, dense cloud. 
and the depth filtering instead of moderate i'm gonna put it uh, aggressive so we can have more detail in terms of the point cloud that means that it will uh, cover a three-dimensional view of all the the model because if you um, use moderate or, or mild uh, it will have uh, preferences uh, a preference for the orthographic uh, position so in this case as we are seeing it from above and we're going to cal calculate the point colors so um, well before we do this let's going to save this and now let's build the point uh, the dense cloud okay that's correct i'm gonna call aggressive and okay and let's wait let's see how it goes again it's using the opencl in this case it started with um, the intel graphics but it's also using the um, the geforce uh, graphic card that i have in my computer so i'll return with you once it's finished okay it's finished so if you want to visualize the dense point cloud you can just go to this icon and press it and then you will see it and now if you want to see the um, one predefined view you can just select a top and since now it's uh, georeferenced, uh, you have the possibility to see it as it should on the space. Now, there is a problem with this model, and you will notice it. It doesn't have a tower. And the reason of that is because I forgot to, to modify the region. So the region is these uh, thin lines. I'm going to make a zoom so you can see them better. So this is the region. And as you can see the region in the in the upper part, it's cutting the the tower. So that's not a big issue except that we need to repeat the generation of the point cloud again, which uh, actually it didn't take much. Uh, it took only like 15 minutes more or less. So in order to modify the region, I'm going to visualize the um, the course point cloud. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to select resize region. So I'm just going to take this up. And in this case, I'm going to take this up as well. So I'm going to try to put the region just covering the area of interest and I'm gonna rotate it a little bit something like that and now I'm gonna show the predefined view of top so we will put the region I'm gonna close the photos well no I'm not gonna close them I'm just gonna put them like that and as you can see the region here is um, is in this area so i'm just gonna try to move it and try to cover most of the mapped area so again here and then i'm gonna re uh, well i'm gonna rotate it something like that and then i'm gonna resize it something uh, something like that yes and something like that and something like that so now it's covered the whole area and now we can just see if the region is actually enclosing the whole thing and it looks like it yeah I think it's okay so now I'm going to repeat the generation of the point cloud and let's see what happened. You can just go again to workflow, build dense point cloud and I'm going to choose again low and I'm going to leave this as it is.
uh, yes, I'm going to use this uh, as it is again, aggressive, uh, reuse depth maps, and and then I'm going to calculate the, the colors of each point based on the texture or the photographs. And yeah, that's it. Okay, and I'll be back. Okay, it's done. So uh, let's check. Okay, now we have the whole tower. And yeah, it's looking very good. There are some noise, as you can see here. And, and also there are some noise here. But uh, this noise, it can be easily uh, erased. You just have to select it. For instance, let's get rid of these lines. So you just have to go here, select it, and press delete and that's it okay um, there are some other points that are noisy here so by selecting them we can just um, get rid of all these uh, points that we don't want in our final model or these ones This could be also related to the sky that uh, it wasn't properly masked. And uh, let's see if we rotate it like this, we can see these ones. Um, okay, let's get rid of these. Okay, I think we can work with that just for this exercise. You can go as detailed as you want. Uh, this big gap, it was a mistake that I committed because I forgot completely about this part of the church. So that was my mistake. Uh, but the model looks very nice. Now we can uh, produce our mesh, which is um, just by following the workflow. So we're going to build mesh and the source data is going to be our dense cloud and then the surface type is going to be arbitrary there's another type which is high field but we don't have uh, photographs from above so our photographs are mostly from the ground so we want to use uh, all the photographs so that's arbitrary and the face count is the number of faces that our mesh is going to have but uh, we want a low number of faces because otherwise our computer could crash uh, by just moving a little bit the model. So for this model, I'm going to choose um, a medium. So uh, normally what AGSoft does is to produce a model with an unlimited number of faces. So every single um, point is considered. But uh, after that, it decimates the model, so it reduces the number of faces. So, uh, but we want to to be able to move the model after it's finished. So it's better if you just right away choose a, a face count that is lower than, let's say, less than one million faces. So your computer can manage to to move the model. So let's just choose a medium and these options are okay as they are so we just need to click okay this process will take about 20 minutes so we will uh, wait until then and uh, well i'll be back again the the mesh is finished what we can do is to follow the workflow and build the texture the only option that normally I change is the texture size, which increases or reduces the quality of the um, of the texture. In this case, for this exercise, I'm going to leave ed everything as it is. Um, and I'm just going to select this option, enable hole filling, just to see if it's uh, capable to close these uh, holes. 
Now, uh, there's one other option that we can use to fill uh, the gaps. So if we go to tools and then we go to mesh, there is um, an option called close holes. So we can use this option to close the the possible the potential the potential holes that are uh, within our model. So you can select the degree of closeness. So once this close is uh, filled or closed, so I'm I'm just gonna leave it like that. This uh, option is also useful uh, if you want to print the model. So now we have our hole closed. It doesn't look very pretty, but at least now we have the hole closed. And once it's like that, we can build the uh, texture. So let's activate the enable hole filling and press OK. So this can take a while as well. Um, normally it takes every every step that we have uh, followed takes about 20 minutes, between 10 and 20 minutes. So I'll be back again. Once we finish the texturizing, we can visualize it by clicking in the arrow of this icon and select the model textured. So now we have almost the same image, but now with more quality. As you can see now, we if we go closer to our model, we can see that we have um, a better depiction of it. All right. And finally, what we can do is to follow in the workflow and build a DEM. Now, uh, the DEM is, is possible because we use the Google Earth points and now the model is georeferenced. Um, so we can use that projection and we can use uh, the dense cloud or we can use the mesh to build the uh, DEM. So it's on you. But what I'm going to do is to uh, produce the DEM as it is using the, the mesh so instead of the point cloud. Because if we use the point cloud, the problem is that we will have this gap of the, of the roof. So I'm going to choose the mesh. Uh, it's going to be interpolated. And um, finally, what we can set up is the resolution. In this case, it's in meters, so it's going to be, yeah, as it is, it's um, two centimeters of resolution. So I think that's good enough. But uh, in order to be quicker, I'm just going to select instead of two centimeters, I'm going to select 10 centimeters. Uh, no, that's that's very uh, low resolution. So I'm going to choose five centimeters. OK, so press OK. It's going to be uh, relatively fast. And we can visualize it by double clicking on the new layer that is created. And automatically the program adds the DEM into the ortho view and you can see it here and if we want to see the cameras uh, but in the 3d model we can return to here and see the cameras like that and we can see the things that we were doing on the field Well, after the DEM, what we can do also is to create the ortho mosaic. So we're going to use the same coordinate system. 
The surface in this case is going to be the DEM. That's okay. And the blending mode is going to be mosaic. It's the default method. And we're going to enable the whole filling. And yeah, that's it. That's it. And the pixel size is going to be uh, one centimeter. So it's like that. And that's it. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Okay, it's finished and we can double click on the new layer that was created, the ortho mosaic. And we can see the ortho mosaic as it was created. These uh, lines that you can see that are black are these ones that are called the seam lines, but we can get rid of that. If we are have a close up here, you can see our reference marks. And the other thing that you can do with this uh, model is to measure. So if you use this uh, icon, which is the ruler, and you measure the distance from here to here, well, it's the same distance that we set up for these markers. If you go to reference and see the distance from point 1 to point 2 is 1.22. So it's the same distance here. Um, and you can also make measurements of this kind here. For instance, how, how big is the tower? or the chapitel. So if you uh, select the ruler and then click here and then click here and you can see that is roughly 10 meters. I'm gonna get rid of the cameras and I'm going to rotate the model. So how big is the church? You can measure that quickly by using the same means. So let's suppose like that. So how big is the wall from here to here? Seven meters. And then let's see from here. Oh, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to put the ruler. So from here to here, the church is about 25 meters. So now you can make measurements, but also you can uh, see the profile of the of the church. Uh, this is a quick technique. Just grab the point, uh, the dense cloud, and now just rotate your model like that. And let's gonna see the model from above. like that and I'm gonna rotate it just a little bit like that and I'm gonna use the rectangle selection so I'm gonna make a section here and now I'm gonna delete also this part I'm gonna uh, undo these actions, but I want to show you this. So now you can see the, the profile of the church. So that's another uh, use that you can make of your model. So you can make profiles using the point cloud. And then um, if I right click on the DEM, for instance, and I export it, I, uh, you have several options to do that. So I'm going to export it as a TIFF. So everything looks OK. Export. So I'm going to export it in this folder. I'm going to call it DEM. 
church save and now I'm gonna open it in GIS and pretty much that's the end of this video so here we have the DM you can see uh, exactly the the church and well you can manage the DEM as you will do it with any other DEM so for instance if we put a hill shade it will look like that you can duplicate the layer and use instead of a hill shade a pseudo band pseudo color single band so you can have something like that or you can change your color ramp let's say spectral and then use the blending mode to say multiply and there you have it so that's it I hope you like this video and well, I hope I, I was clear because it was a very long one. <laughs> See you and enjoy.